Hello, everybody. Welcome, Insanities. It is me, your leader, Annie Letterman, the queen of receiving picture, unsolicited pictures of your peen. Todd is now walking in, so now it's ruining it again. What are you looking no, for? Is it working? Yes. Oh, my God. Don't yell at me. Holy shit. Todd's cocky because he got, he was in the newspaper. He was in um, Daily Mail with Olivia Munn. He got uh, a picture with the paparazzi. Nice. And then today he got a new gaming chair. So now he's very cocky. <laughs> it looks do like it. Spawn. It looks like it's Spawn Marvel DC. It is a nice chair. It's a nice it's chair. It's so dorky. I photo bombed the paparazzi on. Uh, yeah, who was Jessica that? Jessica Alba. Oh, yeah, that was good. I remember that was that. a good one. Um, I was I, riding a shopping cart. My guest is Craig Conant. You yeah. may know him from um, packing your groceries at Trader Joe's, farting <laughs> on you ever, anywhere, and any place. I fart. Yeah. And from going to the same chiropractor as me. Or comedy. Also comedy. I do stand up. Yeah. And his podcast, um, I remember the name of it. Hold on. It's called um community service with craig conant right yeah i got it right i knew it was something i was like juvenile delinquent um bad guy arrested it's about, a story about mushrooms <laughs> and poop stories and it made you famous and he made me famous <laughs> once i was in the comedy store and this girl started like screaming like i have been recognized maybe like 16 times in my life okay and this, I've never had someone, like, she was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She's like, oh my God, you're famous. Like, as I'm walking around, she's like, you're famous. And I'm like, looking behind me to see like, who's famous. I'm like, who? She's like, you. I'm like, me? Okay. I'm like, oh, thanks. Like, where do you know me from? I always ask people that, like, where do you know me from? And she goes, you were on Craig Conan's podcast. And I was like, oh, wow. Yes. Yes. That's wild. I was like, have you watched television? No, I was like, I thought maybe Grand Theft Auto. Or... Maybe MTV. I don't know. Like real TV? No, YouTube. Well, one YouTube. time I used to do a joke about this because I went to the mall. I wanted a date with this guy to the mall and this guy recognized me. And I did that thing. I felt like so, I was like, ooh, I'm going to look so good in front of this guy. So I went like, I was like, oh, well, where do you know me from? So I thought he would list my credits. And he goes, uh, you called me a fish at the ice house. And I was oh, like, shit. oh, <laughs> Also, Todd, we're going to bleep that, but we are going to keep the story. We're going to bleep that. And I was like, Ooh. yeah, yeah, that's not good. But I used to do a joke about it, but he worked at Bloomingdale. So, you know, maybe I was right. <laughs> Am I allowed to put that in even if I bleep it? Yeah, for sure. I bleep the bad words all the time. Yeah. I use, I actually record, I audio record my farts and instead of a bleep, it's a, it's oh, a that's funny. I used to, when I would bring up my ex-boyfriend, I would make my old producer put, Leave Schreiber in it. So I'd, I'd say Leave Schreiber like really fast because his name's one syllable. So I would go like, yeah. Leave Schreiber. And then so it would just like be completely different sound, different level. It was fun. It's fun. It's exciting. It's so exciting, guys. You don't know what I said. That's right. You don't know what I said. It was actually a good word. I tricked you. It was a good word. Now, um, we go to the same chiropractor. Yeah. You give me rides home from the chiropractor now. Yeah. Because you live in. Uh... Yeah. A dangerous a neighborhood. What happened actually, over here? Yeah, it was. I used to live in one of the cutest neighborhoods on the cusp of one of the shiniest, most famous, expensive neighborhoods. But it was like it had that runoff from it, you know. It was WeHo, Beverly Hills, and then COVID yeah. hit, and now it's uh, it's Skid Row. They, I mean, I'm telling you, on every corner, every like hotel in the neighborhood now is just housing homeless people when they get out of prison and the hospital. Which is awesome, but uh, it's let's so be awesome real. It's so awesome when it's not your neighborhood. Yeah, but you don't. I don't have the Citizens app. Everyone has the Citizens app, and they're like, did you hear what happened in your neighborhood? I'm like, do not fucking tell me. Don't I don't want to know. Thing. There's all these, like, yeah, they're on the corner, there's a bunch of, like. Um, there's just human shit and robberies I've all the time. I've watched so many people take a shit on the street. I saw a lady shit on a, on a, on a, on a piece of cardboard. Just like leaned over and I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. What'd you do with the card? Were you hanging out with her? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were with her? Yeah, she was at my birthday party. It was terrible. <laughs> I drove off. I just was stopped at a red light, oh, looked okay. to the right, and it was just like like this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I saw her come out. I was like, 
I'm done. There's a there's a homeless woman, and I have a new puppy, and the homeless people love my puppy, which it's like I'm so happy to bring them joy. They can't touch him, but they can look and enjoy from afar. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, hey, I, I tighten the leash. Like, give me, give me. like you would Don't think touch I, my dog. I would let the dog run into traffic before I'd let them touch him. And but so there's this one woman who sits like on this one bench every day, and we pass her every day. And I'm always like, maybe I should like say hi to her. I do see her every day, you know. And then um, I was walking in another part of town later in the day yesterday, and I just saw her stand up peeing. She yeah. was just stand up peeing. I saw that too once. Squat. Yeah. And it was windy. I swear to God. I was with my sister. It was on like fucking uh, La Brea and like Washington. <laughs> and I just saw this lady. I saw the whole thing. I just saw her pull it down, yep. stand up straight. Bush League and yep. just <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Hey Nicole, my sister, like, look at that." And she's like, "Why?" I just don't understand I don't too because know. so she pulled her pants on, which is like, why even pull your pants on? You're pissing into your pants. You're yeah. not if you stand up straight when you pee, and you pull your, you're just peeing into <laughs> them. Like you squat, so your your holes are over the edge of the yeah. But I was like, just keep them up. It was just it was a wild. It's a lot. And then she was pulling them right back up, and then I was like, I guess. I guess I won't it's, say it's, hi to her. It's sterile for the moment, you know. I just the yeast infections. I can only imagine, but <laughs> they listen. They have houses that, now. And that that's becomes important. your daily diet. Hey, how's the yeast? <laughs> How's your yeast? I just give her a honest out. I'm like, you need yeah. this. But also, it's you know, I'm glad you found a home. It sucks. It's mine. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're just like, I I wish you well and I love you and I want you to get better, but goddamn, like this is crazy. It's just wild. So I had um right before I think it was the protests, and I think the cops were like because they did burn cop cars so close to my house. Yeah. I remember you were there I got a picture. filming that. Yeah, you nice. were, I saw you the whole time. <laughs> it was exciting. I didn't even need to go because you were there. I was like, Craig's representing. He got it. Oh my God. A girl got shot with a rubber bullet next to me when we were standing in the front. I was like, okay, I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go back here now. I'm now, there's so many of my black friends. I was like, do you want me to like come? They're like, we're not going. My friend was like, why would I go there and get shot by rubber bullets? He's like, you can it's, go. It if you was want. exciting. It was every emotion. I was like, <laughs> I was like, do you want me to go support? Or he's like, you do whatever you want. I'm out. I was like, fuck. Do I have to get a good shot with a rubber bullet for my friends? <laughs> <laughs> we get yes, so much attention do. though. We get so much attention. It was it was it was it was an energy though. It's, I it, like it was a movement. Like you felt it. You're yeah, just, I would like, go by, but I would be wearing like I would purposefully kind of like not wear the right shoes so I couldn't stay too long. Yeah, I'd be wearing slides. I'm like, I don't want to get my feet stepped on. I gotta get yeah, out of here. I got blisters. And it was like the beginning of COVID and stuff. But a lot of the cop cars were burned so close to my house that I think the cops are like, peace. Yeah. See yeah. Ya. Except they do eat at a restaurant near my house all the time where I'm like, hey, while you're there, <laughs> can you help me out? Can you help me out at all over here? Like, this is crazy. There's gunshots. And um, they have construction in our building right now. And the construction workers, I've tried to like be, I'm mad at them because they obviously are ruining my life and my peace. But, you know, I'm friendly. So eventually I end up talking to them and stuff. And so outside the house, they were like, there's all these helicopters. And I'm like, they're like, do you hear them? I'm like, it, who cares? Like, it's dude, constant. What they're do you all mean? All the time. They're like, always there. You're fucking hammering. You're in your hammer and you don't <laughs> hear them. I'm like, all day. There's, I used to call when there was a helicopter because I would get so curious. There's a number you can call. And this guy, Dave, picks up. I think his name is Dave or Dan. This one cop that's his job is just to pick up and tell you why there's helicopters. And they legally have to tell you exactly what's going on. So they, you know, Right before all of this, there was a copter, a, hel- a copter. <laughs> that a, do people abbreviate helicopters and call they, them copters? They do now. <laughs> oh, God. I don't. That sounded so- a copter. Um, and I, is that, <laughs> do they call them copters because cops are in, use them? Helicopters? No. no, I don't know why they call it, but that's definitely not why. <laughs> I want to be a helicopter. That's a really like a super cop, a helicopter. Now, so I, you call him and he, he was like, oh yeah, there's a guy with a knife. He's right outside. Like, and it was like right outside my alley. So that's kind of nice to know when you're like, oh, I yeah. won't take the trash out right now. Yeah. And. Oh man, you got to get out of the city, but man. But that guy's so nice. It was fun for years. I would call him. I was like, yeah. and he was retiring though. He's like, I won't see you. I won't be able to talk to you anymore. I'm like, okay, I wonder how bye. many people fell in love with Dave. He was the so helicopter nice. helicopter guy. Well, it's so nice. Cause you have so many, so many times cops are like not helping you. Yeah. They're just like mad at you for whatever. Or even like in Philly, when I was there doing, um, the punchline like a couple years ago, I got in trouble for smoking weed with my ex-boyfriend in the alleyway. And the cop was like, 
I'm sorry. Like he was nice about it, but he still gave me the ticket. I'm like, dude, just fucking ride on. He's on a bicycle. Like, come on. Yeah, just keep going. Like cool Who cops. Cares? But it's Who like cares? rarely you even get that. You know, it's like so when a cop's being nice, it's so nice. Yeah. Even though they've never really been mean to me, I've always been friends with like the cops, and it's a it's a choice. Like in Santa Fe, I was friends with all the cops, and I would when I got pulled over drunk driving, they'd be like, Annie, go home. We'll follow you. You got lucky. I uh I got uh arrested a bunch, but like. I don't know. I felt like they always wanted to beat me up, but they couldn't because it was in the public. Yeah. And uh, I don't love them. I Yeah, I don't love them, but... I understand there's a need for them. But I miss that. I don't love them, but I miss them? Is that okay? <laughs> I miss them. Where are you? I'm alone. I'm alone. Help, help the neighborhood a little I'm bit. I'm alone, but I can't wait to move out. You just moved to the beach. Yeah. You got to do it. I it's do the it. best. I don't want to leave it you know i'm just like it's just a different energy that sounds so hippie but it fucking is i drive yeah. in and i'm like oh is this is heavy this is con- fucking boxed it's up upsetting. rat shit this is crazy it's not good and i can't believe i liked it before well because it was open and it was thriving it was vibrant there was art there was food there was comedy clubs there's fucking nothing i know i liked being There's able to be nothing what i liked about living here is i could go to the my spot would be at like 11 30 at the comedy store and i could leave here at 11 22 yeah get there park say what's up to people and go on stage yeah that's gone so and that's all i wanted and on top of it like i don't i don't know if i can come back now because that life it's like crazy i've never had ocean view in my fucking life yeah i you know where i lived i had no kitchen i went from no kitchen Craig lived in my old apartment I had I had an apartment that I got from. Oh, my my friend, Mike O'Dare, who's the best. He always lets me sit on his couch. I love you, Mike. Um, Every time I've ever been homeless, Mike has homed me. (laughs) He's like, you may as well call him one of the hotels in this neighborhood because he's home to the homeless. Um, Is it working? It's hard to keep going when such a cute boy walks by holding a cute dog. Anyway. I don't even know who that guy is. He came into my apartment. <laughs> this is so weird. He's one of the homeless people. He's a construction worker. Oh my God. I just let them in now. I'm like, is it less loud if you do it in here? <laughs> Sometimes I hear the construction workers be like, oh, we need to knock this wall down. They're like, oh, we can't. And they go, why? And they go, people live there. And they go, oh, people live there. Like new people come what in. What if they, they go, just swung the hammer? I would love it. Just fucking break the wall down. And I'm like, oh my God, the building owes me so much money. Yeah. It well, it doesn't matter because they've knocked all of our stuff off the walls. What if you're like, no one lives here? <laughs> We're not here. This is no Come one. On in. But it's just people get in, they're in shock that there are people living in this circumstance. Like they go, like, what? People live there? <laughs> like, yeah. Are you the last ones left? No, there's like like six movie okay. apartments. But a lot of people moved out and yeah, it's just tense. And then it people like there's varying degrees of how pissed people are depending on how close they are to the construction. At first, it was just surrounding our apartment. So everyone else was like, can you chill? Because I would come out and be like, you guys need to shut the fuck up. Like I was go, going crazy. You got to get out. You guys got to They were out. banging our stuff off our wall. Like yeah. things were breaking. I'm like, don't hit it that hard. And the guy would go, I have to. He goes, well, that's the, how hard I have to hit it. And I go, well, then it's not inhabitable. Like you, ca- I can't live here if you're. And there's no, there's just no way to win. But anyway, so, but now like it's moved to the other neighbors and now they're getting pissed and I'm just kind of like leaning back like, You're like oh, that's right. Oh. does it suck? Oh, sorry guys. Oh, you, they broke your Nana's porcelain oh, dog no. tough break. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Like, oh, is it loud for you guys? I mean, I should feel way worse because they have like kid, a kid and stuff in school. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy though. Your kid's in school. <laughs> This construction you ra- who raises a kid in this city? Just kidding. <laughs> no. Wait, in the city. I was going to say, don't say this apartment because they can definitely hear us. But um, <laughs> whatever. Also, who cares? I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm getting to the point where I don't care if my neighbors like me. That's like a new move. I've never felt that way. I've always like been people pleaser at this point. I'm like, let's burn it all down, people. We're all in hell. Who cares? It's true. Hollywood is hell right now. It's hell on earth. But how do you feel about everyone moving to... Texas and shit and moving well, to Well, I mean, that would, that would be cool if, if I had my money like that. But I also don't have, like, the guys that we know did it are close with Rogan. And, like, I, I see moving near friends, but I'm, like, I'm born and raised here. Like, I yeah, can't. Yeah, that's I true. I know. Leave. And you hang out with your, like, nephews and yeah. nieces all the time. They're so cute. They're so cute. Oh, they're cute. Oh, my God. 
I was really into your nephew, and then you were like, nah, it's about my niece. Did you see her eyes? Yeah, she's cute. She's fucking... But I knew your nephew first. I know. I, this is I all did through too. Instagram, guys. And then... and then. But there's something about nieces. There is something, because I love my nephews so much, but my niece... Girls are so extra loving. Like, boys are just, like, into things, and she, girls are, like... She's trying to be cool like her brother, so she's, like, a little nuts. She's always into shit. She's like, no, I could do it. She falls and shit. And you're just yeah. like, hey, take it. Like, don't jump from She's, there. You could be a little girly. Like, yeah. you don't have to completely break these. She's genitals. seriously booked more shit than me. I know. She's very popular. She booked uh, like two TV shows, two commercials, a Disney prince. Did you help her get into this? No. My huh. sister just did it. Your sister was just like, She's cute as fuck. She's cute as fuck. She booked like half the shit she went on. Damn. And, uh, and here I am. <laughs> Isn't it so sad to be like a casting director for children and be like, actually, no. <laughs> yeah. No. Zoe, no. I never Get out, about Zoe. That. Zoe. <laughs> Zoe, you're acting you crazy. You don't got it, kid. Zoe, you're not cute enough. <laughs> I need you to leave. So he's like, go, go, go. <laughs> she like poops her pants. Zoe shit her pants. We're going to need her out of here. Yeah, bring me Lynn. So it's true. I mean, it's really yeah. wild. It is nuts. Well, I would go on like uh, commercial auditions sometimes with kids, and their parents were nightmares. Like, I don't think your sister's like this, and it's certainly not like the, for that for that age group. But they were like maybe first grade or something. I would just ask them when their parents are. We like, what's like, is this fun? And they're like, because they'd be like so wanting to impress. Like, did I do it wrong? Yeah. Or like, should, can I take it again? I'm like, don't talk to the, don't ask them to take it again. Like, just go do your homework. And they said that they live, a lot of the kids don't live in LA because it's so expensive. So the parents drive them like a couple hours to go to the auditions. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but when do you do your homework? They're like, oh, we have to do our homework um, on the way here. Hey lady, you're fucking your kid up. Yeah. And the kid would be like, so thirsty. I'm like, the kid's like, mom, I want a drink. She's like, shh. Charlie, did you do your fucking lines? Like, and you're like, oh my God, give him a drink. Like, who's thirstier, your kid or you, bitch? Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't get that. No, she just did it when she was a baby, and uh, I don't think she'll ever do it again. But if she books now, she might not have to. She might just be like, what do they call it when they, you go right to offer only? Oh, yeah. She's... Is that a dream to get so oh famous? You're like, offer God. only. Offer only for the people that aren't in Hollywood biz. Um, it's if you like get so successful that you won't even audition, it's like, they can only they just, give you the offer. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. I dream of that day. That would be so good. Also, I don't know if I want to act. I am not in love with it, but I, I, I wouldn't mind being the weird neighbor on a sitcom it or would some be shit. fun to like play around and have a good time and all that stuff. But the idea of sitting in a trailer is. Yeah. I wanted to stand up. Yeah. And most of the like parts I've, by the way, when I was a kid. For some reason, I always, whenever I would see women acting like they were giving birth on camera, I would be like, I never want to do that. Like, for some reason, it was like the most embarrassing thing. And I only get cast as like pregnant chicks now. <laughs> I've had to give birth on a manger, like legs up, like squirting like pussy juice out on someone. I like, hey, Asians, like, I don't want to give birth. Oh, that's so funny. It just felt like so too embarrassing. Like, I would watch people doing it. I'm like, ew. I faked giving birth on uh, my first credit, which doesn't really count. That's also MTV's next dating show next they had me put on a fake Let's belly see, that's so embarrassing yeah yeah and uh, and, uh, and uh, what happened with the girl i think we talked about this before but what happened with I the girl kissed at the end of it she need me in the nuts on accident at a, at a bedfellows on in in what's bedfellows it's a place that sells furniture okay that's Good what i fellows, thought bedfellows it's on Ventura Boulevard and like over in the valley mm -hmm. and then uh and then i never talked to her again did you win money? Yes. How much? I think it was 62 or $82. Oh, I thought you were going to say like 600 bucks or something. No, it wasn't very much. We got to bring those shows back. Yeah, it was a good show. You're on Girl Code, right? I was on Girl Code. I think I've been watching The Challenge. Did you ever watch The Challenge? Uh-uh. So The Challenge is like Real World Road Rules, Real World Road Rules Challenge back in the day came to Santa Fe. It's like all of the reality stars get together and they do like physical challenges. And they get like voted off or whatever. And they can win like a million bucks. Those shows were fun. Remember Room Raiders? Next? Yeah, they were fun. Girl Code? What but do they I have really now? like, I really, I don't think TV exists. Does it, it exist? Doesn't. No. But I really like any sort of physical competition show. I have in my head, I'm like, I'm going to get fucking ripped. I'm going to get out there. Like Survivor is obviously my number one favorite show of all time. 
I would love to do Ninja Warrior. Is that what it's Ninja called? Ninja Warrior is oh awesome. God. Nikki Glaser did it. She did? Yeah. But she only, I mean, they they did it for like the Red Nose, whatever that Red Nose charity was. Okay. But she trained with that girl, Jenny Graff, I think is her name. She's like the badass bitch. Yeah. She's uh, married to Ben Harper and she was in is Jurassic she? Park, right? Oh, no. That's. um. Oh, that's someone else. Laura Linney. You're right. She's a badass bitch, though. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Completely unrelated. It's crazy you would say that, but it's so weird your brain went there. But you, are you thinking of Jenny, the girl from 90210 was Jenny Graf? I don't know, but the, whatever. She's an American Ninja Warrior. 90210? But American the Ninja Warrior. The old school one? Yeah. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, but American Ninja Warrior is very She dated hard. Steve and Dylan, the blondie? Yeah, slut. Remember when Dylan dumped uh, Brenda and they played R.E.M.? Losing my religion. Remember I, when he was freebasing yeah. in the car? Do you remember when he <laughs> died in real life? Oh, Sad. yeah. I didn't even. I just, yeah. When people that you don't think that don't seem unhealthy at all drop dead, it's like, oh. yeah, ooh. All right. Maybe I should write that screenplay. <laughs> maybe I should get to that that book I've been meaning to write. Yikes. Maybe I should write one more joke. Yeah. And then I don't. And then I just go yeah. like. And that then the, the heavy world sinks in and you take a nap at 2 p.m. Yeah, this is what we were just talking about. I'm <laughs> exhausted all day, every day. It's the fucking world, dude. The election, the pandemic, the this, the... But everyone's... like literal heavy eyes. And I've been tested. I don't have corona. So it's like, what is it? This is the, it's ulcer. the air. It's the fucking air. Ulcer? We're, we're affected. We're all affected. You see, if I see you succeed, I'm like, yeah. If I see you down at the <laughs> hotel, like, I'm like, oh, oh, oh wait, oh, bleep no. out. You have to bleep out the name of the hotel. Oopsie. We'll find it. I'll go like this. So we know. Okay. <laughs> I know. I've almost said it a hundred times, the name of the hotel. <laughs> I know. I keep trying to, I always I know it's almost like, say where I live. I'm like, Ugh. I know. I've said like around where I live, but it's like, you just don't. <laughs> At this point, it's like they could just put a little dirt on their face and put where a potato sack is pants. And I just think they were one of the last people. <laughs> okay, come get me. Oh. Yeah, it's just it's just everything, man. But I think, do you drink coffee? Oh, yeah. See, I had a quick coffee because of my ulcer. And now I'm. it's uh, when I'm tired, I just have to be tired. Just take a lot of naps. Cold showers. Cold showers. I don't like to shower more than once a week. Don't. You don't like to shower one on one? No, I don't like to shower twice a day. No, you just shower, you shower, and then at the last two minutes, you, you just do cold. cold. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird. I don't do it all the time, but I get in my ruts. I mean, ruts, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it going. Yeah. And then uh, you come out like minty and adrenaline up and not cold. Yeah. No, I've done a couple cold showers, but. Um, I did a shower thing today that I was actually going to tell you about. So my shami, my shaman told me to do this. So you get in the shower and you think about all of the things that are bothering you, like everything. And then you imagine, you close your eyes and you imagine that the water is light, washing away all those things Ooh. and refilling you with a, just a bright light. I like that. It was a long ass shower. I was like, I still feel it. Yeah. Come on, light, get it out. <laughs> yeah, it's you no, know, it's exhausting. It's like we have to be constantly be doing work on ourselves to feel good. <laughs> I know. It's like, come on. I, I don't want it. I don't want to take a pill, but it's a lot easier. Yeah, I know. I've been doing CBD at night to go to sleep, and I'm wondering if that is fucking with me because I'm having trouble. I'm having vivid dreams, but then I try to write my dreams down. I end up spending. 10 to 20 minutes in the morning trying to remember my dream. Like as I'm waking up, I'm like, Fuck, what was it? What was it? I can kind of like gauge the anxiety level of the dream. So last night was less anxious. So I'm like, okay, we're going in the right direction. I have an audio recorder, not a phone. Cause it's too bright, you yeah. know, just like a little Sony from when I first started stand up and they Back didn't in have 1991. They didn't ha in 1990 when they didn't have audio record as an app on yeah. the phone. So you had to get your little recorders and I still hardly ever record the dream. It's really hard. And then you don't remember shit. I don't, I remember none of it. Yeah. Like zero. I'm like, it was the most vivid, real lucid dream ever. Yeah. And I, I can't even be like, it was in. In my dream, I'll go, I'm going to remember this one. And then you don't. And then I'm like, fuck. And then I always, there's never a pen. I'm always like, where is the pen I brought in? I'm telling you, every time I go to reach for my notebook, the pen I've put in it is not in it. And I do have ADD, so that's my fault. But I'm like. 
How every time? Every time I'm like, gotta make sure the pen's in it. And then I'm like, I don't remember taking the pen out, but it's not there. Uh, so with dreaming like that, I'm going to fuck all this up because I forget shit. But Nikolai Tesla used to say that's where he got all his secrets was from dreaming, lucid dreaming. And he used to, uh, you're supposed to train yourself to be, I don't know, you got to trick your mind into saying like, I am awake and conscious and I'll remember this while you're in the dream right? and know you're in the dream. So then you come out and you pull whatever you get from but it. But I am doing like, I'm like, baby, maybe I'm just like getting closer to it because I do do that. Like I, in the dream, I go like, okay, I'm dreaming. I'm going to remember this dream, but I just don't remember it. It's like, I think I'm just like one yeah. more step. I say all that. And uh, yeah, I'm over 10 over yeah. here. <laughs> I think you're supposed to like turn a light switch off or on. You're supposed to do like, you just, when like, you feel that you're supposed to do like, you're supposed to act. do some like inception shit where you got a little widget. You're like, Oh, I'm in a dream. Let's go ask the secrets of the universe. And you're like, Oh, my knife fell. I'm a- <laughs> Yeah. Your widget would be a knife. Mine would be a sword. They're like, I'm, why is your widget so large? <laughs> <laughs> why is your widget three feet long? Oh, so I love that hippie shit. Do you have the citizens app? I don't like. Oh, I I I have the neighborhood app. That's the same thing. I right? think it's the same thing. Yes. I don't know if you guys have it where you are, but it's like shows you all the crime. I refuse because I think I'll get. Don't have it here. No, I'll have so many weapons because I don't walk my dog alone or anything. Like I, just, I can't even do that. Yeah, you need a little snub nose revolver. Pink but I handle. have like all my wet. You know, I'm like I'm gonna end up like beheading a kid accidentally or something. <laughs> it's like so hard to explain. Like, damn, why did you have a sword at a kid length? I'm like, I don't know. That's where you hold them. He started growling. <laughs> that's how tall they are. Yeah, I get scared. They jumped out. Yeah. But luckily, there aren't that many kids in this neighborhood. Luckily for those kids. Just one neighbor you accidentally killed. <laughs> I just killed my own neighbor. Oh, God. I'm sorry. It's just, huh. But things are getting better. My dog's hair is growing back. I don't feel like I haven't, my ulcer doesn't hurt as much. I still can't eat stuff. It makes me nauseous still, but. Oh, I forgot. My sister texts me. She does Ayurvedic, like natural healing, which I don't remember what she said. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because I asked about your ulcer. Oh, just that's the, She said the, um. I don't know. She said there's some herbs you could take, but of course, knock out all things acidic and eat I'm, like yeah, alkaline nothing. diet and shit. I have like oatmeal. I have pho so much. It's I love pho. I know, but I'm starting to not love it. Yeah, anymore. I get it. And it sucks. And I have to have like my favorite place. Like I have to be like, I call her. She knows my order. I You can't have any. I'm like, save the jalapeno. Save every. It's like there's no yeah. all the flavoring. I I'll can't have, have the sprouts. Yes. And the broth. The sprouts, the broth, and the basil. Oh, I love the basil. I know the basil it's makes so it. Good. It's such a good move. And the sprouts. Honestly, if I couldn't have the sprouts, I'd be pissed. I'm not a big fan of the sprouts. It remind me of like, uh, I know they're good for you. It's all like. I love sprouts. It's like alive. drinking and eating at the same time. It's like getting it's hydrated. Like, it's, it tastes like like grass. Tastes, you taste a lot of grass? I used to chew on grass. It was sweeter as a child, I feel like. that poisoned the earth. Can you blow out that candle that smells because it's giving me a headache? It's creme brulee. It's high maintenance. It's um caramel waffle or something like that. I can't have candles like that because they just make me want cookies all the time. I know. Well, I honestly cried. Todd made cookies the other day and I started crying. I had to throw them Why? out because I can't eat cookies. Oh, <laughs> I felt so bad. N- not that one. It's the the one that's um, Or you can blow them up. Thank you. Yeah. I got a sugar problem. I eat. Isn't I that eat, sad though to like? I, I cry and they still throw the cookies out. Who's wrong in that? Is he wrong for making the cookies? I mean, he's just trying to live his life. You know, he's trying to live his <laughs> life. That's how I feel too. That's how I feel too. Just let the man have his cookies. It's just hard. It's like you're. I'm. I can't have them. You can just have them in a Tupperware and eat them he's outside. He's cooking them. It was oh. smelling the whole house up. That's what I told him. I was like, you can <laughs> buy cookies and stuff. But cooking them is a little evil. You can just have one and deal with the pain. <laughs> I can. It makes me puke. It hurts so bad. Yeah, it makes me shit blood. That's like I know it's part diet, but it's a lot with your mind. I think I I think I flipped it honestly. Yeah, the power of your mind is unreal. Because I did one small um, acupuncture session at Bass Chiropractic, our chiropractor. She'd be cracking my neck real good. And. 30 minutes is not going to cure an ulcer, but I certainly was like, I just in my head was like, I'm done being sick. I'm yeah. over it. I've been listening to this book called, never read a book in my life, but I listen to them all the time. Audiobooks are fantastic. They're so good. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. It was 
recommended on the podcast, the Jim Fortin podcast that I listened to. And it um it's old. And he talks about God a lot, so you just ignore that part. But he um You could just switch that to the universe. To anything. To, to Allah. All Buddha. of God y things. But so I was listening to that and he was just like, never talk about your illnesses and stuff. I'm like, I pretty much may as well name all of these. Like, I still have an <laughs> ulcer. My ulcer's bleeding. My shit's I, I didn't bloody. see you for eight months. You're like, I have an ulcer. I'm like, hey, well, Annie. Just, you should have seen me in college when I got crabs. That's pretty much why I'm a fucking comedian. I could not shut up about getting crabs. Because it's funny to say all the bad, horrible shit. You're like, ah. Oh, because you're also persevering. I'm you're broke. Like, I lost my wife. I lost uh, the family. Yeah. And you're my like, wife's dead. I lost my tooth. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we can say you whistle it. <laughs> lost my tooth. But I I've been whistle. casted a lot as minors lately. Like minors. That is how it sounded bad. You know what I mean? Especially like, with your affiliations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Gold miners. I don't know what I'm talking about either. <laughs> it was hanging there i had to take it but we can edit it you know what i meant gold miners back, back in my i can't do my it. dad literally did that to my mom once he goes my mom goes on crying and she's she's like all of a sudden she's like your dad just told me i looked like a miner i was like that's sweet and, and he, she was like no a coal miner and then i like looked at her shirt and it was like so dirty I was it's like, funny it's good Mom. My mom uh, lost two front teeth at two separate occasions on a chicken bone at Knott's Berry Farm, like eight years apart. That's a lawsuit. I have pictures. It's funny. No, she just smiled. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, losing a tooth is so good. <laughs> she, you have to lean into it. She, she's like a fucking you, pirate, if, dude. Okay, if you don't lean into losing a tooth and laugh about it, it's the most devastating thing that's ever <laughs> happened. Because it takes you from like anywhere you, you are in life to the lowest form you could be. Ruined. You're fucking ruined. Like if I lost a front to them, I, I'm going to kill myself. You have to laugh. You have oh, to laugh. Shit. And especially during like COVID times when it's like, you, it's harder to get a dental. You have to be like, this is a fuck. It's, has a dentist ever like not had an emergency? Like, yeah, you can't lose a tooth. And I would call and be like, this is a fucking emergency. Dude, the first, uh, Three weeks of the pandemic, I crack a crown and just eat half the... I was like, oh. why is this gum so sandy? And I was like, oh, that's my tooth. And uh, yeah, I just been rocking old dead tooth up in here. <laughs> is that what I smell? No, that's, no, I'm just that's, kidding. that's the candle. No, I'm sure it's the trash <laughs> or something in my house. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, you walked in while I was cleaning. Aren't you so surprised about cleaning? Yeah, so any beautiful dentists my out homie. there that can yeah, no. help a hippie there with a following. A, no, there is a comedy dentist. Are you serious? Mitch Burrow will tell. I'll okay. get Mitch Burrow. To, there's a fucking dentist that helps comedians. Everyone thinks because you have followers, you're rich. It's like, no, motherfucker. No, it's the opposite. I have followers. I so you have to give me free things. Yeah. If I have a dentist that's a fan, I help your boy out. My, uh, my tooth vet, hurts. My vet DM'd me. His like vet tech DM'd me and was like, if you ever need anything, come to our clinic or whatever. And then I needed him. So I use them now and they're, I love them. They're so nice and That's awesome. But, but my, the vet follows me and stuff. And I always forget he's trying to be funny and I get so defensive when he says stuff. Oh yeah. I, it's crazy. Like he'll, like I, <laughs> the senior, you fucking asshole. I, I don't know. He's joking. <laughs> I so love he goes, my dog. he goes, um, the other day he goes, wow, you're always like trying to get these discounts from me, but I see you like you're this high roller and all these nice apartments. And I go, my friends are rich. I'm not rich yet. I'm on my way. Like I'll be able to pay you soon. Like, and I just start like, un and he goes, Oh, I just, I follow you on Instagram and you posted a picture where you photoshopped yourself into a really fancy place. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And then also guys, I am rich. Cause I am reading I am the power rich. of the subconscious. I am, I am rich. I am rich. I am, I am rich. rich. I'm abundant. I'm abundant. I'm abundant. I am I'm already abundant. there. I'm already the everything I need I have. My paradigms have shifted and I am a <laughs> conscious light being. <laughs> have you ever listened to the ones at night? Like, yeah, I night? have to. It's, oh, it's, it's, I, it's, why is it so much work? Cause we're so, we, I don't I know. I think I will be honest. I think when we get richer, we're already rich. When we get richer, when do you get to, I think it's a little easier. I think it does. I think your confidence goes up when your bills are paid. Yeah. At least when you have enough savings, you're like, oh, I'm fine. When that shit starts going down, you're like, all right, when are we opening? Like, yeah. I got to do the road now. But I it gotta, transfers yeah. to something else, I think. Because then I think once you like, especially in comedy, once you hit it big, I think, where your money is just set, then it's about relevance, yeah. right? And it growing switches. your audience. I know that I'll always 
probably be striving for the bigger, better, whatever it may be. But I feel like just when you're financially free, you just can breathe easy. You and if can, you don't have that, that is- you're just like, yeah, I'm doing better than I've ever done before in my life before. But last year I made $15,010. Yeah. You did? You're so lucky. What do you mean? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, did, I got my taxes done and then I was just like. Like, like, so like, no, nah. I was like, no. Nah. And he, he, like, it was just, it was comical. He's yeah. like, yeah, man. I've had like, the that's opposite like, happen He was though. concerned. Like, that's it. I've had the opposite happen where I get my taxes and I'm like, holy shit. I made that much. Cause I'm like, I lived broke. Like I lived in a way that yeah. was broke. And I'm like, fuck, I didn't even like appreciate that I was making that much money. Like back in the day I had one year where I had a TV show like, and you just do these gigs here and there and you just don't think. And the way I was spending and I had a boyfriend I was like completely supporting and it, I had nothing to show for it. I just bought so many. We both had a wig or shoe habit. So it was like they all went to Jordans and stuff. I mean, it was. <laughs> That's insane to me. Yeah. I've always been a baller on a budget. Like, it was like You shocking. never could tell I, I made that little amount. Right. Like I always had. I paid like if I went on dates, I paid. Yeah. You know. And even my girl was like, you made what? Like, she's yeah. like, how did you buy me? I was like, why do you think we went to in and out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go to Gracias Madres, you know, I but know. I'll treat you to some. I always, when I used to hang out with Jim Norton all the time, not, we're talking about dates. We didn't go on dates, but he would always pay for the food because he's, you know, he was yeah. like rich. And, um, and I was always like, can I just like buy, he would, I would just like buy him Starbucks or whatever, you know, cause it's like, yeah. I feel bad when, especially when you're not fucking someone and you're just friends and they keep doing it. But I mean, no, I but guess, if they're rich, they're rich. That, that's yeah. the first thing I would enjoy doing so know, much is just be like, order whatever you I want. Know. It doesn't matter anymore. And when I was a fly on the wall in the green room at the comedy store, I, I believe it was Nick's Schwartzen and Michael Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor from Smallville. Cool. And I was hosting and they were talking about how, because they knew each other when they weren't right. you know, celebrities and they, they came up together just right. in different worlds. And then they were talking about the thing that they appreciate most with having financial freedom is they order whatever they fuck right. they want on the menu yeah. and don't even look at the price. Dude, that's um, Olivia took us out to eat, paid for everything. Olivia Munn, and then tipped seven hundred dollars. I have to keep mentioning this. Damn. It was so nice. It should not go into the ethers. It should be known. But I have, have you ever like ordered and not looked at the price? Unless you're with your famous no, friend. No, I still am not. I still look at the. I'm still I like worried look at about the price. it. Yeah. Imagine not having to do that. Yeah, that, that's like just, just completely. Like, no. But when I go to Whitney's house too, she's like, I. She just will order one of everything. She'll just have like, she'll like, come over. I got food, and it's just like every. I love going out to eat with Bobby food, because they so order fun. 49 items and just. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best. And then I try to take the leftovers. <laughs> oh, I know it's so embarrassing. I'm like. Coming in with a big purse. You're a guy, so if you're wearing a backpack, it is yeah. suspicious. It looks like you're stealing the food. He took me to Dan Tana's on uh, Santa Monica, right by the Troubadour. It was like a seventy dollars steak, and I really wanted it. So you know, I'm not gonna. I know, and then it's hard because you're like, I don't want to look like I'm ordering the seventy dollars, and but they don't care. But They're he's so nice. just so Bobby, and oh, I was Bobby's like, hey, so I was nice. like, can I can I get the steak? And he didn't answer me, like just like my dad, you son of. A, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then the waiter comes, and I look at the waiter, I look at me, he goes, just get the fuck. Yeah, oh, it was so, so funny. funny. Oh my god, thank you, Bobby. That was the best steak I've ever had in my life. Bobby Holy shit. is a big fan of the show. He's definitely watching. Um, I fucking love Bobby. Years ago, he gave. I had a boyfriend who worked at a comedy club, but he wasn't a comic. He just never got a good job because he thought he might want to become a comic. It was so annoying. He would tell me he was a comedian. I would be so embarrassed. <laughs> Once someone was like. What do you guys do? And he goes, Oh, we're comics. I was like, actually, I want to go. Actually, I'm a sound guy, <laughs> comedy club. <laughs> like, <laughs> he turns around what? and you're like, he's not. I was just he's like, not. are you kidding me? I'm like, I've worked so hard. This was crazy. This was also the one that I had my baller year and I had nothing to show for because I was paying for all this stuff. But anyway, so he, which is my fault. It's always your fault if you over your choice. Yes, exactly. No blamies, blamesies. But I remember him coming home one day and being like, Bobby Lee gave me a hundred bucks. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, he just asked me, like, he was like, oh, are you a comic? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, here, man, like people used to help me out, like make sure you help people out, too. And I'm like, do you know? Give it to me. I'm also like, do you know how pissed he would be if he knew you were just dating me? Like, yeah. you're just my, you're not a comic. It was so crazy. That was so sad. And then I didn't want to, t- like, encourage him to do comedy because I didn't want to be dating an open micer. It's just like. 
he gave me a hundred bucks because he hit a rock out of my hand and it broke <laughs> and I was devastated. He's like, oh, <laughs> here. And I was like, ah. what kind of rock? It was a gorgeous rainbow moonstone crystal. That's so funny to snap that out of your hand. <laughs> he gave me a weekend and a hundred bucks. I was like, oh, fucking. That's so nice. funny. to. But you could break you know my rocks worth- any day. I do like the killing joy and then you give something better at the end yeah. is funny. Yeah, it was worth it. Slapping food or anything. That's not cool. No, it's so funny. It's okay. It's, I think it's a comedian. You okay. better have that Benjamin ready. <laughs> it's so funny to slap food out of people's hands. You, just, you <laughs> slap I think it's a, a New York Cinnabon out thing. of my hand. Come on, that's I've war. slapped hot dogs out of Joe DeRosa's hands so many times. Fucking What did you boss. give them after? Well, I'm a girl. I don't have to. I just go like, isn't that funny? That's not funny. Um, Kevin Barnett, dearly departed, love you, miss you. He, we were at the um, Comedy Central, a party once during Comedy Fest in New York, and they were sponsored by Klondike bars, and they had these like really delicious mint chocolate chip ones. And I, I slapped so many out of his hands. I think they ran out. Like I, and obviously now he's he's left this earth. I. I hope he's eating them in heaven. I'm so sorry. To do that. <laughs> and I hope you weren't really mad at me. That sucks if you died he hating was, me. He was. That was his final but words. But all of the other friends too, like they came in on it. Like Joshua, but everyone would be like, Are you? and they'd like come behind. He's like, you motherfuckers. But it was so funny how many times we did it. I can't. I it's can't. fun. Comedy bullying. You're not cool. Uh, I, I thought you were cool. You have to leave. You slept. We're, not, we're not even going to release this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Food slapping as a comic, you have to take it. I saw uh, my my this sounds bad my fat friend in uh in high school so some stoner shit at Seven Eleven drop he had t- is it, I say fat friend because he's a big guy and he has two chili dogs one in each hand and like the door hits one out of his hand <laughs> and it lands on the Seven Eleven mat the no he ate it and he looks at me and he looks at the hot dog and and he, he just goes. I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> I think about that like every three months because it just made me. How's, and, he and I was, with, how's he done with COVID? Oh, this uh, he's probably dead now. <laughs> I mean, with that behavior, he was probably the first to leave us. <laughs> this was like 16, 17, that fresh stoner shit where he laughed. Me and my buddy Brandon just cackled the whole walk home. Oh, my God. You just reminded me. He's talking about 7-Eleven. My twin brother used to be a swim, uh, a lifeguard at the local pool and him and his friend Matt were leaving to go on their like break, their lunch break. And Matt had just gotten his license and they went to seven 11 and Matt pressed the accelerator instead of the brake and crashed <laughs> into the seven. <7-11. laughs> you know how many friends I know so that have crashed in into houses. What yeah, is with that? It's so funny. It's like maybe 60 is not the right age. Yeah. The only reason I think people let that happen because it is like, <laughs> The, we were driving, we were in Santa Monica and we saw a car had made a right hand turn and it was like a blue boxy looking car, like totally a young girl, you know, and it was like, a, like had made a right hand turn onto the sidewalk and just hit an electrical box. Like it was one of the most <laughs> embarrassing things. And we drove up to take pictures and there was like this young girl like crying. It was just like. She was crying and it's just like, you're too young to have your license. Like you yeah. can't. Yeah. And especially like when we got our license, because I remember when I got my license, I was like, I took my parents' car the first day to go to school, windows down, started smoking cigarettes out their window. I had like a foot up on the. Yeah, thing. we're not ready I to was drive. One hand, I was like, Woo, but we didn't have phones. Imagine I, we also had. Remember, they were like, don't change the radio stations while you're driving. That was the big thing. I drove illegally for like three years. I just bought a car off my dad, a lemon, because he's that kind of man. Anyways, I did it because I knew I'd be like, it's, I bought it. It's my car. I, I can drive. And I didn't know. Like someone had to tell me, you know, you can break when you turn. I just was taking oh, me too. turns. Oh, I was going. Just, <laughs> just fucking. I was like accelerating. <laughs> they were like, no, 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 no. I had no clue. And Everyone then, just hold on. <laughs> the, so the first day, so that was the morning going and I was speeding and then uh, at every stop yeah. sign, like just going as fast as I could. And then when I left school, I got followed because I cut someone off because I didn't even know. I'm like, look both ways. Like I just like peeled out of the school yeah. and then this person followed me. I had to like drive into a 
uh, train station. Sorry, I'm exhausted for no reason, so I can't collect my thoughts. I had to drive into, I'm like, what's that called? Uh, a park and ride, you know. Um, by the way, don't those signs always, always sound so fun, the park and ride signs at a train station? I'm like, that sounds fun, <laughs> park and ride. I don't believe I've ever seen that sign. Okay, maybe it's just in Pennsylvania, <laughs> it just says park and ride. Park but, and ride. So I had to like hide in the, like park my car, turn the lights off Why and hide. Why did you take the-, the criticism? They were coming. I didn't know what they were doing. Oh, I, didn't, I, I had never it, I been in a. Yeah. But it was within like. Why didn't they teach us how to drive? Well, I was I wasn't of age yet. Well, I had a fucking. I went to a guy, this guy Norm, who was my driver's ed teacher, and he. You know, he had one of those cars where he had the brake on his side, yeah. and we drove around and stuff. And he was this big fat guy, and he had a stutter, and he would make me drive him to his house to get chips, and food and stuff, and then. He would ask me questions and I would tell him like weird things. I would tell him like <laughs> about me and my friends getting naked. Like it was like a weird man, old man. Such. <laughs> but he was like my friend. I was like no what boundaries kind of, of the driving adults. school is. But this? he was like, <laughs> like eating his chips. Like, and then you guys did what? You know, it was just really weird. And so there's that. And <laughs> oh then the, we had to also take a class in Northeast Philly. And I have a twin brother. So we were doing this together. We didn't go in Norm's car together, but. We went to the actual class together. And <laughs> my brother's brother, like, yeah, I had to drive naked with Norm. <laughs> no, I didn't get naked with him, but <laughs> no, we were talking I know, about it. Yeah. your brother did. I was like, the story, oh, God. Uh, oh, man. But anyway, so then um, I went to the class and, you know, they were teaching all these rules. I'm like, this is so boring and I hated schoolwork and stuff. So my brother and I stole the tests, the test book, took it home, Xeroxed it, put all the right answers in it. Kept shrinking it down. My dad had a Xerox machine. So you remember how you could keep shrinking things? And so we shrunk it down to like pocket size and handed them out with all the right. So just we're probably. Nice. We are probably responsible for a lot of like vehicular manslaughter. Oh, not nice. Not nice. I mean, we cheated on a driver's test. Yeah, that's actually not good. That's not It's really bad. Kids watching this. I have a large kid audience. <laughs> I failed my first driver's test. Did you? Because I didn't look behind me when I reversed. I just went like. Rrr. I um I passed, but I think I should have failed because I did do a turn. I had like two marks against me. And I think the person either was just being nice, lazy, or. That's not something you should be nice, even though it means the world to you when you're 16. That's not something like, oh, just yeah. give it to her. I just like, recall feeling, because my brother didn't pass, and I did. I just recall feeling like I didn't deserve it. Mm. But maybe that's a low self-esteem, but I just didn't. I just can't believe I didn't know that you're supposed to break on turns. And then I started <laughs> doing it. I was like, that's way easier. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Who would have thought? I, the worst. <laughs> I Okay, so my friend, Peta. <laughs> Growing up, he lived in Williamsport and Williamsport's like country land and they have like, it's where the Little League World Series is and stuff, but it's like a country Pennsylvania town. And so I would go up there, we'd go snowmobiling, we just, they always had motorcycles and stuff like that. So I went on his motorcycle, I must have been 16 or 17. And we went like far and at the end he was like, dude, what the fuck? And I didn't realize that I was leaning the wrong direction the whole time. Like instead of leaning into the turn, I was leaning away. And he's like, we could have fucking died. And I just had no. 20 years later, we reconnected and he was and I reminded him of that. And he's like, holy shit, I forgot. He was like, that was the most dangerous. Of our lives. <laughs> I just thought like yeah. common sense to me was like, don't lean into falling over. But I was completely wrong. God, yeah. I'm so glad I didn't get into motorcycles. Yeah, it's terrible. Is You're going to die, man. Yeah, especially me. My dad. uh that's all he wanted was a motorcycle growing up and then he got one and he crashed it and then he was like don't ever get a motorcycle he crashed it like the first week yeah and he's like i shouldn't be alive he's like don't get one and then every friend i have that has had a motorcycle gets in a gnarly fucking yeah. accident they're lucky to be alive and they're not paralyzed this kid from my high school who told everyone i wouldn't suck his dick i'm not saying this is why this happened to him but <laughs> he was motorcycle racing and he peeled out, <laughs> crashed, stood up, like kind of like triumphantly, like brushing himself off, like I'm fine, and then got hit by a car. Should have stayed down, bro. That's what he said to me. Should have stayed down. <laughs> when God put you down, just stay down there for a little while. Yeah, like like what you try to do to me. Stay down. Anyway, sorry, dude, that your dad. Everyone in my high school is dead. <laughs> There's like three of us. That are I know it's sad. We were juvenile delinquents, though. We were like bad, so yeah. it's like we kind of. I remember thinking, 
God, my only role models are like criminals, I guess. Like nobody ages well with being a mm. juvenile delinquent. There's several of my homies that are in prison or in and out of prison and some are dead because of drug overdoses. Some working overdoses. in and out. Some working <laughs> in and out. Uh, it's crazy. You're like, fuck. It just doesn't age. When you're a kid, you're like, it's pretty cool to like do drugs and be you're bad like, and stuff. You're like, hey, you're like get out yeah. of that lifestyle. Yeah, you got to grow out of it. That's why even though I hated college, I think it was a good... Cause it just got me new people. I wasn't with the same people. Cause it is the influence of your friends. It always is. Yeah. I, I, I got so bad to where my core friends are like, eh, you stay They're over like, there. Yeah. And then I've met more knuckleheads and then I went down that and then, and then thank God for comedy. Cause then I found my new circle. I know it saved me. Me too. I know it's so sounds so silly to say, but it's it true. Did. It fucking did dude. Cause it gave you something to be like obsessed with and You're work like, oh, really hard. I, it was the I, only I, thing I've ever wanted to do. Yes. Yes. There's nothing. I was, everything else felt terrible. Yes. But I always had friends. All of my friends were always like, I was always best friends with like the, the most bipolar girl you've ever met. Like I always, it was the hot girls. I liked hanging out with the cute girls. So we were like the little slutty girls, you know, and they're always nuts. They're fucking, they're fucking nuts. Mean nuts girls too. is a real, that's a based on a true story. I know. And I'm trying to think of the, they weren't, they weren't even that mean. They Go weren't to even real that high mean. School. We're fucked up. They were mean. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, like one of my friends, because I went to the juvenile delinquent school, but then my friends would get kicked out of that school and sent to like a worse school. And that's when it was crazy. But my friend went to her juvenile delinquent school and she got in a fight with the teachers and pulled a chunk of the teacher's hair out. <laughs> <laughs> she punched me in the head once. I was like, oh. It's just like that teacher is just like, this isn't worth it. Yeah, why are you doing why that? Why am I doing that? But I think teachers at those schools are there to molest the kids. Mm, that's my theory. I can't say all of them, but... Why are you working with at-risk kids? Like, why do you like kids that don't have boundaries or parents watching them? Because no one will believe them. I know. That's literally <laughs> what I think. Because I went to a fucking um, Jeffrey Epstein high. <laughs> I've been trying to do this shit into a bit because I set it on the road and it, and with comics and we died. But it has bombed every single time. I love those bits where you're like, can I like, trust no. myself? <laughs> but there was this one creeper in high school. And he used to always hire the delinquent kids to like clean his house yeah, with his, with their shirts off and like do push-ups and and he would spank them for money you know how much money would he give but like five bucks for a bare booty spank See, that's why you go young because the younger ones if you go to someone that's like 17 18 19 they're gonna be like give me real money yeah but d dude and then like the whole bit is, is my friends that are in and out of prison and they're gangsters now and i'm like you can't loke up on me like you got spanked <laughs> <For $5. laughs> when we were 16 for five bucks. Dude. And if you say that to an audience, they're just like, oh. because when you grow up like us, you just assume everyone. It took me until like <laughs> two years ago to realize that everyone didn't grow up like us. Yeah. Yeah. Some people had. I'm like, did you have dinner with your parents? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa you guys sat down and had dinner? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, we did every once in a while, but. <laughs> yeah. And my Mexican side so wild. Like every, not all, but like most of them, like one of my uncles was a pool hustler. One was a speed freak. One was a Vietnam vet. And just, you know, just, yeah, like it's, it, it can't, you know, it, the war, <laughs> war does something to you. It's just, it's just, but I love it though. Cause that side was spicy. Like it was fun. It is very fun. But don't you find now like. P like I'm sure the way that your whole life has settled down by the beach and stuff, you probably feel. I'm glad I had both because I I'm half white, half brown. The white side was a little more civil, a little more. Yeah. Uh, and the, the brown side was wild, and uh, I I'm so thankful I had both because too much of one way right. is bad. You know, yeah. you want the yin and the yang. You, don't you want a little spice. Too. I don't want to be. I don't want to live my life without being arrested at least four That's times. Why I'm so. My nieces are funny, which is cool because it distills that thought in my head, that myth about, um, you know, that you have to be all fucked up to be funny or whatever. But my nieces are just living this like beautiful life. Yeah. They're taken such good care of. Like they're having such a good time, and they're still really funny. And I'm like, oh thank God, like they're gonna be cool. Yeah. I don't have to worry about them being like losers because I think I told myself that as a defense mechanism, where I was like, no, it's. You got to get all fucking fucked up and have all these crazy things happen to be funny. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, maybe I didn't mean no, that. You, but yeah. it's all good. No regrets. No regrets. You're like, fuck. A couple of regrets. You could just a be regrets. funny and happy. Yeah. 
But do you ever see like, you know what it is? I think you can't have, you can't be super rich. Well, no, super rich people. It depends with the parents. You just need to make sure the kids have to earn some shit. Right. Because we've all been friends, or not even friends, just know those people that have had everything always, and they're brats and they suck. Yeah. They fucking suck. I can always tell if someone came for money by their comedy. Usually, it's sillier. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a little bit of like less... You're like, oh, you like never you don't worried about your next meal. Job. Yeah, oh. like you're not trying to like yeah. make a job. <laughs> like, but yeah, there were, I used to get so mad at this kid. This one open mic. I'm like, do a structured joke, you rich kid. Yeah. Like, at Mike's back in New York. I'm like, come on. You can do it. But then. Who, you came who cares? up in New York? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, I started in New York in 2009. Okay. And then I came out here in 2012. After Montreal Comedy Festival. Nice. Did you ever do Montreal? Yes. Yeah. I did it the last year before I know, COVID it's so funny. hit. Dude, that shit's a that's a that's a that's a thing. Yeah. I had no idea. You know that's the first festival I ever did? And I had never... so much pressure. Did you have fun? I didn't yeah. have fun. My uh, first time, my second time, I had the greatest time ever. I uh I I luckily was just friends with enough people that have done it and they kind of gamed me up. They're like, just network and have fun. Like yeah. that's it. And my whole group was like mad at me for networking and I wasn't even I never on purpose network. I'm a chatty person and I always like talking. I don't always go to like the popular people to talk. That's not I think that was like an inferiority thing with me where I felt like I didn't want to have to like try really hard or not be myself. So I wasn't going to like hang out with like this like successful, I just ended up talking to like agents and stuff. Cause to me, they were like janitors. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they were. It's like when I go to like a party, I want to hang out with the people that are like serving the food more than sometimes. I, yeah. I always do that. Yeah. Actually. I talk to everyone. So I used to get so butthurt when people would be like, Oh, she's always like networking or whatever. I'm like, I'm talking to everyone. You just wouldn't talk to those people for whatever reason. And, um, but yeah, my whole group was like, would make fun of me. Cause I was You're like, and I was like trying to like I was hanging out with, here. That's what we're here for. Yeah. I was like hanging out with Colin Jost. Like, is this going to happen? Yeah. Now he's married to Scarlett Johansson. So I think it was a thing. Um, and Bonnie McFarlane. That's when I became good friends with Bonnie McFarlane. I met her at JFL. Oh, she's the best. She's Canadian. So she's fits right in. She's with Rich Voss, yeah. right? Okay. I met them in the green room with Bobby Lee and Jimmy Carr. And uh, that's what was so cool about JFL because, like, these people I never met were just like, oh, congratulations. Yeah. And you're like, what? Like, Jimmy Carr said, congrats. Yeah. Like, I know, it's, new it's faces, surreal. It's weird. It's, it's, I kind of brought this up, I think, on my last podcast, but New Faces is like this, this part of uh, this group in Montreal that you get. And so it's in what is it's in like late July. And so pretty much from. When did the auditions even start? Like October? Like you're like pretty much months, trying to right? get Montreal all year as a new comic. Or, I mean, Craig wasn't new, but it's like, if you haven't gotten it, you're trying to get it. Yeah. Unless you're fucking old. And then you're like, shit, I don't think I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, they'll throw an oldie in. But it's like, you know, the industry being like, this is somebody like, look out for them. And it's a really good thing. You don't have to get it, but it's good to get it. It's good. It's good. I didn't know. And then after I was like, oh, that was like, I knew it was a big deal. I didn't know the gravity of it. Like everything started happening. I started headlining after that. I got reps after that. I didn't yeah. have a fucking pot to piss in until that shit. Yeah. Well, I did it and I bombed and Howie Mandel was in the audience. I was like, I remember looking at Howie and being like, fuck, why are you here? <laughs> Once I told him that, I was like, oh my God, I bombed in front of you in Montreal, like thinking he'd think it's funny. And he, he went, Oh, that's all right. We all bought. I was like, no, it's fine. I mean, I'm here. I'm doing it's good. I'm like, yeah. but, and I remember I didn't do well. And no, but I mean, one Joe Mackey killed Joe Mackey is a comic in New York who fucking crushed and everyone else bombed. And it was like, you, he, Joe Mackey's so sweet. So you're happy for him. But it was like, fuck, I wish we all could have bombed. Damn it. <laughs> it's like, fuck, now we have to blame ourselves. And, but it was so much pressure. I think that's what it was. It was pressure. And we were in a weird room and I ended up having this really, rough time where I kind of, I just like, it wasn't good. It wasn't a positive experience and it wasn't fun. And then when I look back on it, I got so fucking much from it still. Yeah. I got on Chelsea lately right after that. I got my first manager who I fired my lawyer who I have no clue if he's still my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. Um, but like all these things kind of spiraled out of that. So it was good. Yeah. We had fun. Uh, who was in your group? Oh fuck! I don't remember. Who cares? Oh Shane, Shane Torres. No Shane uh, 
cancel culture shane oh, shane gillis oh gillis, before yeah. he got yeah uh that was cool uh hannah einbinder brad davis silencer punky johnson Chappelle lacy cool um so many people i forget yeah that's a good crew i definitely made good friends there yeah and um but the going not doing new phases is so fun going just to regular montreal and who knows if this is even going to come back like our comedy festival is going to be a thing anymore the best comedy festival in the world I ever did was the Vodafone Comedy Festival. That's in Ireland. That was the most fun. I've only fucking done the Ireland. One. They paid us. This was like back in vote, 2006. Vote for fun. What Vodaf- did you say? Vodafone is like their Vodafone. Verizon or whatever. Okay. So that was what sponsored it. But I think I got paid like just thousands and thousands of dollars to go to this and to go hang out in Ireland. And I went a day early, and I like got rented a car or a couple days early. Got an Airbnb, rented a car. It was, by the way, the most dangerous thing I've ever done driving in Ireland. <laughs> I should not be driving on the wrong side of the road. I should probably not that be driving. That shit the- fuck me up. No, it thank was, you. I'll take Ubers. I smacked my mirror off immediately. <laughs> like the, the second I got the rental car. And then the guy who Airbnb I was staying at was a cop. And he was like, oh, I can fix this for you. He's like, go drive and get this mirror. So I had to drive without a mirror to go get the mirror. I kind of wanted to be like, can you go get it? Can I'm you, so it? scared. Yeah. I'll pay you in acorns. I don't have anything else for you. Um, But it was, I went and like drove to the cliffs of Mohar by myself. I would drove to, have you been to Europe at all? Uh, I went to Amsterdam and Paris when I was a, a druggie. It and sucks it was, when you don't, when you're young, when you like aren't. It was there. amazing, but I don't remember much. Yeah, I know. And uh, yeah, I, I went with four homies and we all almost died like at least four <laughs> times each. We all almost got hit by a train. They have no guardrails, no ding ding. It's and we're on hash and I know. fucking opioids. It's really scary to go to another country, even if it's just riding in Europe. bicycles. But yeah, just because you're not used to the customs and you're getting fucked up. Yeah. You're on vacation. So I remember like, just eating hash and going to Anne Frank's museum and just crying. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, Do you know yeah. my name is Anne Frances Letterman? I did not. My parents named me Anne Frank. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just started crying. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking accidentally named me Anne Frank. Damn. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Yeah. But it's it's so cool to go see other places. It's just Ireland was just shocking. Just how old all their buildings. Like our country is so green. young. It's just green. It's super green. And like the cliffs of Mohar. Have you seen pictures of it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, it's just these beautiful cliffs and there was like a fog and it was just amazing. And then I went to Glendalock, which is this old church. No, I'm just going like this. Oh, God. I thought he was like doing this. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get punched. What? No. <laughs> One of these things. I was like, what? My hand was all sweaty. I just rub it on my dry thigh. It was like this. I was like, what secret are you trying to tell me? Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> secret, secret, I need secrets. to travel more. I just figured I did it when I was a drug dealer. That, that was a tweet I had, but it was true. I haven't been on a vacation since I was a drug dealer. Yeah. Because it's just, it's, and then I found comedy. I'm like, well, now from now on, all my money and effort goes into comedy. Right. And, you and don't I'll want travel to take time with off. comedy. Exactly. You're like, I'll go if it's work, but. That's not a fucking vacation. No, it's not. It's not like I think the goal is when this comes back to be chiller about comedy. I think I think you can do the Bill Burr method. What's he do? He only tours where like a sports team he's playing that he wants. Not all the time, but like he's like, all right, the Bucks are playing. I'm going to go do that theater that night there. Yeah, that's the dream. Yeah, Adam like Sandler, that. same thing. He only, Why do you think every film he does is on a tropical right. island? He asks his family, where do you want to go on vacation? Yeah. Okay, that's where we're shooting. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing to and get to that level. And then you don't have to level. do shows every night. You just do a couple shows. But One I or think, two nights, that's I it. I think what I COVID will kill, for hopefully for a lot of comedians, for me, I think it's a good thing, is that needing to go up multiple times a night every night or feeling like guilty or like I didn't do something or I'm missing out. Yeah, COVID took that away real quick. Well, just I think I'll be chill with like taking a week off. Every, I've heard that out of multiple. Like I heard Fahim say like I, I he's like, oh, I just I don't have to get up that much. I've gone up like a few times. I have a show on Thursday and before COVID, did you ever think that ever? I never. Though? If I never, took a night off, I was like, I was like oh, Fuck, I I'm suck. I'm not a Why comic. Would I not? I'm not yeah. this. And you make some weird deal with yourself. Yeah. In the beginning. It's nice to get up and work on shit, but. It's not necessary. No. And I feel so much better. And I I was at the comedy store doing a spot before everything closed down again. And not to be competitive or comparing myself or anything, but 
I had a way better set than the people that have been hustling and doing the sets every night and trying to keep doing it because people aren't buying that anymore. Like they're not, they don't want, I think they want like real. Yeah. So I was more chill and I was like, Hey, you know, like, and I'm, t- I'm delivering my jokes in a way more comfortable, real manner and they're newer and they're like, they're fresh. It's not like, all right, I got to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. Like I'd see the other people come on that have just been like hammering out sets. I just see their names everywhere. Not that, I mean, that's like, I fucking understand that addiction and that's good for other things too. But it just, I saw people like kind of like looking at their phones and stuff and not wanting to do that to watch yeah, that. And, Cause and it's it, just it like, it just depends. Like every, everyone's different too. Like some people have to write like Seinfeld and write it all out and get every word out. And I'm like, I'm going to just go talk about delinquent spankings. Yeah. You know, like I just, it's I don't. It's going to work. Yeah. It'll work one day. It just needs more. I don't more, know how yet. But it needs less up top and more in or it's something. It's been yeah. bombing. <laughs> I know. How many shows have you done? Um, s- s- with that bit or since COVID or since what? Since COVID. Oh, I've been a madman everywhere whenever. Oh, that's why I'm, t- I'm talking shit about him. <laughs> <laughs> no. People don't like his type of comedy. No, but it, that that's still restricted. Like, I mean, everywhere, whenever, all the time means three shows a week. Right. Which totally. before I was like 11 or 12 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I've done like four sets in COVID and they've yeah. all been delightful and great. Yeah, I've done The Road. I started headlining during the pandemic. Oh, that's fun. Nobody else would go. I would start doing it again. I'm flying soon, so I'll see how flying feels, but it's the first time I'm flying. Just wear your mask. You're fine. What is it? Don't even. 99.8 survived. Just don't do point two. That's all I got to say. But I don't want to get sick, whether it's the flu or. You won't. You just take your little immunity boosters. You just oh my put, God. put a little CBD on it. You'll be all right. I, like some of my friends have weird symptoms, though. It's not the same. They have like a weird. They're like their heart still feels weird, or blood clots in their legs, or are, are they Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving that in because they are. I just mean because no. honestly, they are. <laughs> wow, they are. Holy shit, they are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's do questions how long have we been going do you know okay so we're gonna do we'll do one question for the rest of this and then we'll go over to the patreon and do the rest oh no i'm getting oh no that's for a podcast i think i'm done doing people's podcasts for a sec that's fine unless you want me to do yours Okay, let's see. I want you to do mine to go be look at where I live and to be like, oh, like I have to do this. Yeah. No, I, I want to move to the beach. I feel my friends live over in Pacific Palisades and the air, it just smells so good. Oh, it yeah, feels so uh, good. It makes you Pete, feel right? hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you feel hopeful. I love Pete. Yeah, Pete's and awesome. And he came and did mine and he's like, oh my God. Yeah. He's like, I know. He's like, I can't move back. And I'm like, I can't move back. I know. You can't move back. You just can't. People do it though. But don't do Venice because I my homegirl lives right on the water in Venice and it's, it's homeless people. It's fucking dude. I'm I told her I'm like, get a revolver. Like it's not I don't want to feel here. unsafe. It is not. Yeah. So make sure you pick a safe beach. Pacific Palisades, beautiful. Hermosa down there, Manhattan, all that shit. Safe. Venice, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> Good luck over there. Good luck walking the dog. Um. Uh, what's the most offended anyone has ever been by you? Offended by me? Yeah. Oh, uh, I did jokes about heroin and someone got very upset about that because their brother had passed from heroin and, 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 uh, they like came at me hard on the internet <laughs> and it, and it was emotional and i and i i i wanted to be like i didn't lose a brother but i've lost lots yeah, of friends to heroin as well as i almost bye fell raul off. miss you <laughs> yeah. bye raul that's my friend not i'm not bye making Adam a mexican joke and uh, <laughs> bye scott i know melissa <laughs> <laughs> bye avery and uh so they i remember like i had them in tears and i'm like hey like i am on your side yeah. i'm making fun of it i know. to try to make it light i know right. it, it's but yeah i remember that being like ooh, sorry yeah, it's hard when like something triggers somebody like but i'm just speaking of the thing i can't yeah 
I didn't not say not talking about it doesn't fuck make it your go brother. away. Yeah. I, I, it's nobody wants that to happen. I uh, at the comedy store once, I did a pretty basic your mom joke to an audience member, and. Would you have thought I knew his mom? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this man, I said, it was right before Halloween. I said, oh my God, it's so weird you're here because I was thinking about going for your, as your mom for Halloween, but I can't put that many dicks inside my mouth. I mean, it's, I don't want, I can't. It's a bit. It's, it's a, a fucking it's like, a... it's so obviously not a thing. And he, he stood up and he was like, how dare you talk about my mother? And I thought all of, I thought there was security in the room. <laughs> so I was like, doubled down. I was like. Oh, wow. You think I know your mom? Like, that's how big of a whore your mom is that you think I actually personally know her? And then he literally was at, I was like, security, security. He was up at the fucking, he was at, on the stage. Like, he was there. And they grabbed him right before. But it was like, oh, oh I almost God. lost my teeth. I almost looked at your fucking yeah. mom at Knott's Berry Farm. I seen uh, Main Room. It was the OR. OR. I, in the main room, I saw a guy get pissed at Sam Tripoli and try to throw a, a chair at him from the audience. What was? Do you remember what the bit was? I don't, but I'll never forget that moment. And then Sam's such a gangster. They kicked, they like caught him as he was like this with it. I don't, I might have been Steve Randolph. I don't know. Someone grabbed the chair. They grabbed the guy. They got him out. And Sam Tripoli is such a gangster. And he's like, no, your girl stays. And she stayed. <laughs> Not for that much longer, but it was just the, the whole audience was like, yeah. ah! It was, it was such a cool, crazy moment. And Sam just went at him. And the guy like was like, yeah. it was like a bro. He probably was coked up. And I don't know. I mean, yeah. To throw a chair? I know. This was, he probably. That's Coke. He probably wouldn't have made it to the stage. And he probably would have hurt hit someone else. an audience member. Because he was like 15 feet back. He wasn't far, but he was, he was, you know, he was 15, 20 back. Who could throw a chair that far? Yeah. <laughs> it's all late. Like, Do you know what I hate? This is what I like. I do like. I like if someone has like a wheelchair joke or something, there's someone with a, in a wheelchair in the audience and they like look at them and include them. And I, I find like, I think you should make fun of people with disabilities because they're people and we should make fun of each other. And yeah. it's like gross to not, do you know what I mean? It's almost like if you have a joke and you don't tell it cause someone's in the room, that's like bad. I think. I say let them have it and hopefully and they, they, they can all, have a sense most, of humor. 99% of the time so they many, enjoy it. I have wheelchair followers. I love my wheelchair followers. You know I love you. I will make fun of your fucking legs that don't work. And when you come to my shows and we'll all have a good time. I get DMs about this because I do. I really, I'm like, because I was a special ed teacher and people would just like not look at them and didn't want to be rude. And it's like so rude yeah. to exclude them and make them feel like their lives aren't, they can't be made fun of because it's like punching down that their lives don't have quality and aren't good. A, a good bit's a good but bit, man. I hate when people want to hurt people. That I don't like. I yeah. don't like when people go after, like, you know, and I've lost my temper before and stuff, but I always, on stage, but I always try to talk to the person afterwards and, like, make it chill because it's, like, I've had usually some, I'm I've projecting. Dagged, I'm it's usually I'm having a day. I've snapped early Sometimes on. I'm, it's usually the red week when that happens. <laughs> usually I have to warn them. Okay. So, guys, this is Craig Conant. Uh, listen to his podcast, um, Community Service. You can find it on YouTube and all of the... You were my most popular episode till Bird did it. And you're still... You're mm. close. You're close. Well, now go back and watch it so we can dethrone bill fucking burr <laughs> that fucking asshole he's selfish he's got children and a family and he gets to travel and go see all of his teams when he wants to and here i am barren with a dog who doesn't have any hair on his eyes i need this more than he needs it all right also he has a lot of merch Lucy oh Lucy. yeah i'm getting you new hoodies crew neck sweatshirts and t-shirts in of a different design Support Follow a hippie. Him on the socials. He's very funny on it. There's lots of farts. If you're fart adverse, you may not want to follow him. I'm your guy. Um, and I it's, remember when you speak, do you have anything to plug? But are you doing any shows or anything? I actually I'm doing Florida December 26th. Let's twenty seven. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, Tampa, side splitters. See you soon. Yeah, go there. See it. Support live ish comedy. <laughs> soon could be dead comedy. Um, and then if you guys want to keep listening to more questions and answers, join the Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Annie Letterman. 
Follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, give me some comments below. Get me back in that motherfucking algorithm. Um, all right, guys, have a good holiday. I'm probably going to do more of these before it, but have a good holiday. Peace. Happy holidays.